Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today we have again a Glen Moray single malt whiskey here on my cask. I tasted already a Glen Moray, and I, I think it was the first one, the classic. And I'll put you the video of this Glen Moray here. Today it's a finished whiskey, a pot cask finished, 40% ABV, and. Uh, it's most likely that these whiskies in these bottles are younger, younger whiskies because this bottle does not carry an age statement on it and that those casks were heavily used before second fill, third fill because otherwise a finishing would not make a lot of sense because finishing brings a lot of aromas into a whisky and if you have those second and third full casks where the youngness, the unripeness of the whiskey has already faded uh, during the maturation. It's called the subtractive maturation. These unpleasant aromas, those sharp aromas uh, vanish and the additional maturation where aromas from the cask move into the spirit um, does not happen, hasn't happened in those refill casks. So you have to fill the content of the uh, second and third fill casks in a fresh pot pipe and then the aromas from the fresh pot pipe will immediately go over uh, into this matured whiskey and give fresh intense aromas into the whiskey. And uh, luckily if you carry or keep the whiskey only a short time in these European oak casks, then the bitterness of the European oak wouldn't be uh, sensible in the finished whiskey. So it's only a short time for finishing between six and 24 months. And in this time, in this short, relatively short time, the tannins and the bitter aromas from the European oak will not go over into the whiskey. Well, Glenmorey was sold in 2010, probably around this, to La Martiniquez, a French company. And formerly they were owned by Glenmorangie PLC, which also owns the Hardback distillery. And they uh, sold, they deinvested uh, the Glenmorey distillery because uh, the whiskies does not have such a high reputation in the market uh, like the Glenmore and Joy the Artback have and uh, the mother company, the holding company is Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy, a luxury goods company. So Glenmore didn't fit this luxury sense of the company. Well, Glenmore starts with fresh ideas, with fresh whiskies new ideas and hopefully we will see an upcoming Glenmore with all those wonderful whiskies like the the 16 year old we have on the market and there had been even older whiskies on the market for the 100 year anniversary there was a, a sherry cask bottle I think it was. Um, on the box it said Glenmore since 1897, so it's quite a young distillery. Elgin Classic, well the other bottle also called itself Classic. The Glenmore distillery has been producing single malt whiskies since the 19th century. Well, three years into the 19th century. From Elgin, the capital of Speyside, Scotland's most famous whisky region. Hmm? I think there is Isla also. Well, in former time, Former times, Speyside was the most famous whiskey region in Scotland, but the Isle of Isla, since a few decades, uh, is building up momentum. The craft of producing this elegant and well-rounded single malt has been passed from generation to generation, ensuring the legacy of the Glenmore distillery continues. Yes, of course. Small batch release, so if you see this bottle, you probably have to hurry. Um, 
Glenmore is not popular for its port wine finished whiskies. This is definitely the first one. So I can't tell you if there will be more if they have an ongoing process of port wine finishing. No idea. And often small batch release is sad for increasing sales, but sometimes it's true. <laughs> you can't know. Uh, here, rich wine flavors combine with vanilla oak notes to produce a whiskey which is well balanced and full of character. Color light gold. Oops. This is not light gold. It's mahogany. It's a light red tone in it. Perhaps they <laughs> looked after the color before they added artificial color. Hmm. I don't know if it's colored or not. So if it's not written on the bottle, it's uncolored. I suggest it's colored. So write all those manufacturers listening to me right on the bottle. You're not coloring your whiskey. Then I can stay here and say, well, it's uncolored. Otherwise, I have to suggest that you're using color. Nose. The first impressions are of toasted vanilla and subtle hints of oak. Toasted vanilla. I never toasted a vanilla. No. Aromas of rich dried fruits and leather follow, laced with dark chocolate and blackberries. Taste. A wonderful burst of spice hits the tongue, combined with a refreshing lemony citrus tang. As the taste develops, a rich caramel sweetness with traces of cinnamon, mm, one of my very favorite spices, comes to the fore. Finish. The finish is smooth with soft oak and honey sweetness, lingering gently on the tongue. The spice continues to tingle and dark chocolate flavors develop to give luxurious texture and a fitting final to an elegant whiskey. <laughs> I'm thirsty after this reading. Uh, no, never drink whiskey against thirst. No, it's just sipping and it's just pleasure. And if you do not feel wonderful, or don't taste whiskey. Whiskey is something for rewarding and not for swallowing your anger. No, this will lead into addiction. So, if you're lucky, celebrate the evening with a whiskey. A wonderful fruity vanilla note. Yes. Vanilla, a little caramel, lots of fruit. This tawny part, which is the, well, the most grown uh, type of, sh of port wine. I would say sherry, no, port wine in Portugal. It's about two thirds of all port wines are tawny parts. Well, after this, a little bit of older aromas appear, probably leather or, well, chocolate. Yeah, very wonderful, pleasant, demanding, elegant, very, very good for a whiskey without an aid statement on it. Wonderful. Well done. But to be honest, it's not very complex. It's wonderful, but not complex. Mm -hmm. Little citrus. Lemon citrus is appearing. A little spiciness is coming up, prickling on your tongue. Caramel becoming stronger and cinnamon. Perhaps faint, very distant. Elegant and smooth 
in the finish. The oak is pleasant, no bitterness at all. Probably a little bit of honey. And chocolate, I'm afraid. <laughs> Not really. So this is a wonderful sipping, sweet and sipping whiskey. Dangerously pleasant. Yeah, uh, whenever you find this bottle on the shelf of your local dealer, go for it, because it said limited edition. This might not be really true, because you don't know what is coming up next at the Glenmore, but it's not that expensive, so just take it with you. It's a good, it's a good one, even without an aid statement on it, and definitely it does not show uh, the taste of youthness. No, it's enough mature. It's not too complex, but it's dangerously sipping sweet lingering whiskey. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Feel free to share this video with your friends and have a look in our database. You will find this bottle there also. Thank you. Thank you.